Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain! I can't hear you! Aye, aye, Captain! Oh! Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? Nonsense be something you wish. Then drop on the deck and flop like a fish. Ready? SpongeBob SquarePants. SpongeBob SquarePants. SpongeBob SquarePants. SpongeBob SquarePants. All right, lightning biologist. Today I'm going to, in this video, explain bikini bottom genetics. So let's get started. Um. If we are, so this, this actually runs us through some of the good, some of the vocabulary that's really necessary for understanding genetics. And so let's look at number one. Question number one is just asking for each genotype. So genotype is an important vocabulary word. Genotype is the type of gene. And so this would actually be the allele. So is it... Um, Big F, big F, which would be homozygous, dominant. It could be big F, little f, which would be heterozygous, because they're different. They're not the same. And then little f, little f would also be homozygous, but in this case, it would be homozygous recessive. So what it's gonna, what we're gonna do for number one is you are for each genotype listed below indicate whether it is heterozygous, and we're gonna use an H E for heterozygous, uh, or is it homozygous H O. And so basically we're just gonna go through. So if it's the same, it's homo. If it's different, it's heterozygous. So big T big T would be homozygous. Big B little B they're not the same. So they would be heterozygous. Big D, big D, they are the same. So it would be homozygous. Now I'm going to give you a chance, pause the video, and see if you can fill in the rest of number one. Okay, I have also highlighted all of them that are homozygous to make it a little easier for you to check. Then the question asks, which of the genotypes in number one would be considered purebred? Purebred is another vocabulary word. So if it is pure, it means that it is the same. And so purebred, purebred would be all of those that are homozygous. So they're all the same. And so all of them that are highlighted above in yellow. So I'm just going to do a highlighter mark here. All of them that are highlighted in yellow uh, would be the purebreds. And then the next question asks, which would be hybrid? And so hybrid, um, some of you maybe have heard or maybe you have a hybrid car. A hybrid car runs on two different things. It might run on electricity or it might run on gasoline. And so a hybrid is the same thing as a hetero zygous so a hybrid would be a heterozygous so everything up above that is h e or heterozygous is going to be the hybrid so purebred homozygous same hybrid heterozygous two different all right let's go to question number two question number two asks determine the phenotype so now we're looking at the phenotype. So before we were talking about genotype, the type of gene. Now we're going to look at phenotype. And phenotype is the actual physical um, characteristic. And so what do you actually see? So for example, I look at SpongeBob. His color is yellow. Yellow is the phenotype. I don't know necessarily what the genes are that make him yellow, but I know his phenotype is yellow. So the yellow body color is dominant to blue. All right. So yellow is dominant to blue. And so if there is a uppercase Y, then you know it will result in yellow color. 
And so I'm giving you, or we're giving you a genotype and you have to write the phenotype. So big Y, big Y, they're both dominant. And so this would be yellow. Big Y, little Y, they still have one dominant and a dominant allele will mask a recessive allele. And so heterozygous will also be a yellow or dominant phenotype. Here we have little y, little y. So we don't have the dominant allele. We only have the recessive. And so the outcome will be a blue body type. Square pants or square shape is dominant to round. And so the big S would be a square. And so if you're homozygous dominant, you are going to be square. So square. Heterozygous has a dominant allele, so the outcome would also be a square phenotype. And little s, little s is homozygous recessive, and so there is no dominant, and so the round would be the phenotype. Question number three. For each phenotype, so I'm giving you a phenotype, give the genotypes that are possible. For Patrick, so now we're talking about Patrick. So a tall head is dominant to short. So if an offspring is going to be tall, that means they have to have at least one dominant allele. The other allele could be tall, so they're homozygous tall, or they could be heterozygous. Both of those would result in a tall phenotype. In order to get a short phenotype, the only genotype that would result in a short phenotype would be homozygous recessive or little t little t patrick's pink body is dominant to yellow and so if an offspring is going to have a pink body they would be either homozygous dominant or they could be heterozygous because the dominant will mask the recessive and if they are going to have a yellow body they will have to be homozygous recessive because yellow is recessive to pink. All right, moving on. Number four. Here's where we're going to start looking at actual probability. SpongeBob SquarePants recently met Sponge Susie Round Pants at a dance. SpongeBob is heterozygous for his square shape, and Sponge Susie is round. And so we're going to, I'm going to make a key, all right, because what trait are we looking at? We're talking about a square shape, and we're talking about a round shape. So now, which one is dominant? Well, here's where, how I know that. It says heterozygous for his square shape. If you're heterozygous, that means that you have to be and, and I don't have to use the S. I can use whatever. I can use whatever letter I want. It's just I have to have a dominant letter. So I'm going to use R just for the heck of it. But a square is dominant. And so it has to have at least a big or dominant allele. The second allele doesn't matter. Sponge Susie is round. And so if a heterozygous results in square, then square has to be dominant. Sponge Susie is round, and so her genotype would be little r, little r. So our cross in this case is going to be heterozygous cross to a homozygous recessive. So these are the genotypes of the parents. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to the Punnett square, and we're going to fill in the Punnett square. On the outside of the Punnett square is where we place the alleles that the parents could give in their sex cells. So if we look at this parent right here, this is SpongeBob. SpongeBob is heterozygous. So SpongeBob is either going to give a dominant R or he's going to give a lowercase r. And again, I could have used A's, I could use B's. I didn't use S's because an uppercase S and a lowercase S look too much alike. Um, 
Sponge Susie is round, and so here's her genotype. So she is either going to give a little R in one of her eggs or a little R in the other egg. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to fill my box in. And how I do that is I literally just carry them down. So this big R is going to go down here, and this little R is going to come over. So I'm going to have big R, little R. Again, the big R, I can carry it all the way down. So I have the big R, and I'll carry this little R over of the little R. I'll do the same one with this little R, and the little R gets carried over. SpongeBob could give his little R, and Sponge Susie could give her little R, and we could have little R, little R. And so inside this Punnett square, inside here, these are the possible genotypes of the offspring. <laughs> Excuse me. So these are the possible genotypes of the offspring. And so now it's asking you, list the possible genotypes and phenotypes of their children. Well, we either have big R, little r. So that's heterozygous. And if we go back to my key here, I know that that would be square. or they could have little r, little r, and that would result in a round. What are the chances of a child with a square shape? Well, I come over here and I circle this one would be square, and this one would be square, and so two of the four. So two out of four, or which is also one out of two, and that's 50%. What are the chances of the child being round? Well, round is gonna be little r, little r genotype. And I notice that I have one, two of my four. So again, it's two out of four, or one half, and that's 50%. And so 50% of their offspring should be round, and 50% of their offspring should be square. All right, moving on to number five. Patrick and Patty at the dance. Ooh, both of them are heterozygous for pink body color, which is dominant over yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and make a key. Pink is dominant over yellow. So I'll use a big P and then a little P and a little P for yellow. And both of them are heterozygous. So in my cross, I'm going to cross heterozygous means they have one of each. They're not the same. And so they're both pink, but they're both heterozygous. So there's my cross. If I bring it, come over here to my Punnett square. And I put what alleles can this parent give? They could give the big P or the little P. What alleles can the other parent give, the dominant P or the recessive P? And if I go ahead and fill those in, I'm going to find that one of my four will be homozygous dominant, one will be heterozygous, second one will be heterozygous, and one of four will be homozygous recessive. List the possible genotypes and phenotypes of the children. So we could be homozygous dominant, or heterozygous, which would result in pink, or we could be homozygous recessive, which would be yellow phenotype. What are the chances of a child with a pink body? So I come over here and we'll go ahead and highlight. This one's gonna be pink, this one's gonna be pink, and this one's going to be pink. Um, the other one is going to be yellow, and so now I have it color-coded to help us out even a little bit more. And what are the chances of a child would be pink? Well, three, one, two, three of my four, so three-fourths, and three-fourths would be 75%, like three-quarters of four, or 75 cents. And what are the chances of yellow? One of four, one of four, which is 
5%. Go ahead and try to answer question six and seven and 